إن الحمد لله حمدا خالدا مع خلوده لا منتهى له دون علمه هو الولي الحميد أهل الثناء والمجد أحق ما قال العبد وكلنا له عباد وعباد الله سوانا كثير كثير وليس لنا رب سواه نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه. I bear witness that there is no Lord worthy of worship except Allah. Allah Wahdah, the uniquely one. He is uniquely one, Jalla fi ulah in his names, uniquely one in his attributes, uniquely one in his tawheed, uniquely one. Subhanahu wa jalla fi ulah, laysa ka mithlihi shay'un fi al-ardi wa la fi al-sama. Wa huwa al-sami'u al-basir. Dear fathers, brothers, mothers and sisters, I counsel myself primarily than all of you. And the best advice that I can give you upon the member of taqwa, the member of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is to uphold taqwa, is to observe taqwa. And what is taqwa, you ask? Taqwa is to be conscious of Allah, to be mindful of Allah, to be thoughtful of Allah, to regard Allah Azza wa Jal as your highest regard. Meaning, when you are at work, or at home, or at school, or at play, you're constantly thinking, is Allah pleased with me? Is the act that I am doing right now pleasing or displeasing to Allah? Because you're either in this end of the spectrum or the other. There is no middle ground, you see. So you have to check yourself and be mindful of Allah. Be cautious because everything returns to Allah. Every amr, every khalq, everything returns to Him, Jalla fi and you will be judged accordingly. And he advised us in his words, the Quran al Karim, to fear him, to put our fear and our hope in him, to be mindful and thoughtful of him. Have taqwa in Allah. Ittaqu Allah haqqa tuqatih. Observe taqwa as it should be observed. Fulfill your duties and your rights to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wala tamutunna illa. And do not die unless you are upon a state of submission. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And this is an indication that if somebody lives upon taqwa, the mindfulness of Allah, the thoughtfulness, the consciousness of Allah, you're always reminded of Allah, then you will submit your will to Allah, you will submit your life to Allah, and subsequently you will die for Allah. Will die upon a state of submission. Wahani and Wakuba liman mata, Mukmin and Mukbil and Muslim and Allah Tahullah. These are the words of Allah. They are words not to be matched or mimicked. 
not to be duplicated, fabricated, or alterated. There are words unlike any other words. The most profound words are the words of Allah. And the most profound guidance is the guidance of Muhammad Abu al-Qasim sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. An unlettered, illiterate shepherd, Arab man. In the vast deserts of the Sahara Desert, who was never noted to have recited, written, or read a poem. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designated him specifically out of all of the other creations, out of all of the other human beings, out of all of the other anbiya and messengers. And selected him for the most profound words. The Quran al Kareem. What deen al Islam, deen al Yaqeen. He has the greatest example, the pinnacle example. If you wish to follow anyone, to take the lead of anyone, then follow Muhammad al Qasim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You will find no one better to lead you to the epitome of character, the epitome of conduct. Qimmatul akhlaq. Muhammad Abu Qasim sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And he advised us and he warned us to be wary and to be cautious of the innovations. I've been consumed for the past week or so in terms of the devastation and the chaos that has ensued in Syria. The earthquake that has swallowed up entire villages, towns, cities, turned into rubble, into dust. Over 40,000 dead and still climbing. Chaos and devastation. And you and I as human beings, the first question we ask, why? How could this happen? Why did this happen? And it is completely normal. <coughs> However, we have a guidance. When you ask why, you're alluding to what was the cause? How could something like this happen? And their root goes to the one who creates and causes everything in Jannah. من يأمر الأرض فتطيع من يأمر السماء فتطيع Who commands the heavens and they obey Who commands the earth and it obeys وقيل يا أرض بلعي ماءك ويا سماء قلعي من يأمر الأرض والسماء المخلوقات الخلاق المنين who commands his creations except for the Creator subhanahu wa jalla fi ula? And who? Who is it that questions his creations? And his creations are unable, cannot question him. It is Allah. Allah wa hidam wa Yes, and he will ask you what you have done, but you cannot ask him why and what he has done. And this, this is cited in the Qur'an various times. Fi Surah Az-Zalzala in particular, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, إِذَا زُلْزِلَتِ الْأَرْضُ سِلْزَالَهَا When the earth shakes and rattles, وَأَخْرَجَتِ الْأَرْضُ أَثْقَالَهَا And it explodes, and brings out the deep-rooted metals within it. <coughs> the human being will then wonder what is wrong with it, what is going on with it. Because we, we have 
We think that we have tamed the earth. We have overpowered it. We walk upon it boastfully. We build upon it. We laugh upon it. We eat upon it. So we wonder why can we not control it? What is wrong with it? What is wrong? Why is it acting out? On that day, it will speak. And it will tell you what's wrong with it. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created it. And it is He subsequently who commands it, who gives it divine decree to be still or to shake or to rattle or to crack. Everything is by His command, Jalalafirullah. But we as mankind, we have a weak, limited, primitive knowledge. So we seek the unknown. And it is beyond us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لا يفعل إلا لغاية وحكمة علمها من علمها وجهلها من جهلها Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not act in vain. He subhanahu wa ta'ala, his actions are reserved with full intent and clear and absolute wisdom. Even though you might not understand it, you must accept it. In the Muslims, <coughs> I've heard constantly asking, why them? Why those poor Muslims? Most of them are refugees, miskeen, la yastahid. Intel miskeen, wa anal miskeen. We question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's qada wa qadar. And we say, the people, they didn't deserve it. Why them? They are Muslims, they're refugees, they're impoverished. That young boy who did not reach the age of Bulu, who died beneath the rubble. Miskeen, intel miskeen. That young girl, Aisha, who was merely 13 years old, dutiful to her parents, a beacon of light in their life, and she died beneath the rubble. Miskina, la antal miskin. Those people will, raise, will be raised on Yawm al Qiyamah and they will be crowned the kings and queens. Yudhaw ala ru'usihim, tajul baqar. Al yakutatu fihi khayrun min al dunya wa nafi. They will be adorned with crowns upon their head. A single jewel within that crown is worth more than the world and what is within it. And they will intercede for 70 of their relatives and their family. How will you die? أسألك اللهم أن تجعل موتنا شهادة ودماءنا مسكا. For those who died beneath the rubble, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them from the status of the shuhada. This is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And regardless if you come to grips with it or not, it is His will that will override any will. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nabbaha sahaba that the shuhada of this ummah are a lot. They vary in categories. al maktunu shaheed, al-gharikhu shaheed, al-harikhu shaheed, al-mat'unu shaheed, wal-radhimu shaheed. There are various categories that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses the shuhada. And this is by his hikmah and his ayah. But what about the man who died while looting from the rubble? A man who survived the initial quake, yet he entered the rubble to loot and to steal. And the building crashed down upon him. Is he a shaheed as well? 
I cannot tell you who is who and what is what. Allah Azza wa Jal yab'athuhum yawm al-qiyam ja'ala niyadim. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who decides that He will send them upon their intentions. And what about those who survived? But they survived in the agony and the torment. And they survived in a state of suffering. A girl for three days was trapped. Three days. And when they rescued her, the only concern in her mind was her salah. She did not pray for three days. There is a reason and an ayah and a sign for this to occur. So you and I, three days passes and we missed all the salah. And we are in full luxury, full ni'mah. Three hours passed and you did not even mention Allah. Three days this girl was trapped and all she worried about was the salah that she missed. And what about the mother that was holding on dearly to her children? She's holding on to her children, awaiting certain death. And she keeps repeating, La ilaha Muhammad Rasulullah. And her children are repeating, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. So they die upon those words for days. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qaddar that they will be rescued in order to live, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And the blood of the Muslims flows beneath the rubble. And it nourishes the dima'ahum. Their blood is not just, it is misk. Their blood flows beneath the rubble. And it nourishes tawheed wa takbir. Dima'ahum tajri wa tasbi. La ilaha illallah wa Allah. Then when they pull them out, what do they say? Allah wa kaan la ilaha illallah. Ali dima'ahum zakiyatun ta'ahim. And perhaps it didn't dawn on you, perhaps you missed it. The last point. How come the EU, the UN, North America, Canada, they didn't do enough, you see? They didn't do enough. It wasn't a tragedy worth giving. It's a double standard, yeah? You missed it, didn't you? They threw money and arms at different places. But because Turkey, Turkey, Hafidah Allah, is a Muslim powerhouse, governed by a Muslim government, and its leader is a practicing Muslim, Hafidah Allah, the kuffar held back. The disbelievers held back and they watched. They threw little crumbs just for sure. And the Muslims are asking, why don't they help us? Why? You still didn't get the memo. You still didn't get it. And it is a three men. The Isa belongs to Allah. Wali Rasulihi Wali Mukminin. Ya ayu Allahina. لا تتخذوا الكافرين أولياء من دونكم. So don't ask why Allah subhanahu wa taala did something or why they didn't do anything. Ask what can I do as a Muslim? What is my duty as a Muslim? And know that the Isa belongs to Allah subhanahu wa taala and His Rasul and the Nabi and the Nabi. أقول ما تسمعون أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولذم أستغفره إنه هو الغفور.